Hey everybody, it's Ledrock here again, your fisherman friend. Today we are not going fishing, but we are going exploring. We are heading east of Montego Bay again. It seems to be my favorite spot where I can find a lot of the things that I'm looking for. We are going in search of a stingray today. So while we are on our journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, press the notification bell, and also hit all so when we upload a video, you will be among those who are first to receive the update. Um, here we have on our way, the first thing we came across is a lionfish looking very flary, looking very harmless, but today it's one of the fish that causes the most um, you know, damage to our fish stock because this fish only eat the young ones and the egg. Um, as we swim along with our on our journey, we came across also an arrow shrimp. This one is very harmless. You can pick it up. Don't harass it too much. You know, you have to be careful with it. It's very fragile. I'm just picking it up so you can, you know, have a look at it. Um, it's shaping more like an arrow, if you notice on the back of it. It have two pinches, but I never really pinch. It's just for capturing its small food that it need to eat. So as we look for our stingray, the stingray is a round like disc shaped animal. You mostly find it in the white sand. Sometimes in crevices like these, it's in the sand or close to the corals. Very rare you'll find it in the open white sand because um, unless it's swimming and, 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 and hunting, then you'll find it in the white sand just like that. Um, so as we go our journey, you know, we are exploring. We may find it, we may not find it. So we have to, you know, stop by some of the other resident of the ocean floor. Um, we have here the sponge coral little vase, beautiful color. You know, I'm very surprised at this bright color that can be seen at this depth because normally everything down here at 90 feet is either brown, gray, green, you know, but we have this bright, beautiful color and this wonderful uh, formation here of the vase, a vase sponge. Um, if you notice in the distance to the right, you'll see another one, um, a brown one on the sand. Also, you notice a little um, blue-headed wrasse swimming in and out. It seems as if this is where he lives or where he goes for protection. Uh, so, uh, so we, you know, stop by just to check these sponges out so enjoy the scenery as you see things through the lens of my camera so we are going to move on and as we move on we came across some tubes um sponge coral remember we spoke about some of these in, a, in another video but while we're looking for the stingray in the sand you know we you know just stop by and check out the other neighbors in the underwater neighborhood all right that's a barrel sponge you're looking at to your right out of the right of the tube sponge and there are the you know soft nature corals that are growing one of these days we will look at those and um, explain them some more and why is it that we have so many plant-like organisms growing on the reef we will talk about that in another video but as we explore, we move on because we can't stay in the same area if we're going to find a stingray. So we move on to another area and we have some of the neighbors from the underwater community. These fish are locally known as pork fish or blue bone. They are very, you know, fat, uh, a lot of flesh on them. They are the nurse shark most tastiest. So whenever they go in the trap, the nurse shark will always break it. Some other neighbors of the reef we have here are some goldfish. Now these are juvenile. These hang out around this coral head in the sand. I think because this is a really kind of sheltered area, so not much in the sense of current. And um, it also offers some protection. It's very cave-like, so they can easily slip into those crevices to evade predators such as barracuda, um, you know, pampido jack, assai jack, and other fish like those who 
seek to have them for their breakfast, lunch, or dinner. A lot of them are around this area. So I keep this area secret because I don't want anybody to go there and disturb them and catch them. This is about 95 feet of water. And um, that's why everything look a little gray. Somebody asked me the other day if we couldn't get some more colors. Um, yeah, when I do the zero to 30 feet, you will get more colors. And that time I will be snorkeling. I'll take my little nine year old daughter with me. Um, this is also a very special spot for me because there are about two um, plants of the black coral in this area and I will do my part in protecting them. So whenever I see individuals scuba diving in this area, I always say to them, you're the last person dive here, so you know, so if you go down, you know, see the black coral, you're responsible. So because these corals are rare and they are protected under the law in Jamaica. So I'm searching this sandy area and the reason why I'm looking so much at the sand is that sometimes the stingray cover themselves under the sand to evade visibility. So the sharks that would normally feed on them don't see them that easily. So they hide themselves and they, they you know, kind of disguise themselves under the sand. So as we swim and we're looking on the sand, you look for a disc-like shape um, animal with both eyes on top and it's of a long tail. Look for that kind of formation in the sun and look where the sun is kind of agitated because it means then that they have to agitate the sun a little bit so the sun float up over their back, fall back on them and then they are perfectly covered and hidden from the naked eyes. Unless you know what you're looking for, you will not see that a stingray is in the area. So while we're checking out these lovely um, good fish and um, um, we're now looking to your left coming up now, you'll see the black coral. There it is. Very fine leaf looking like a willow tree. I'll just move my infrared lens so you can have a better look at it. Right. There you go. Looking more like a willow leaves, but it's growing from underneath the, 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 the coral. Uh, that's a black coral, very hard in nature, like the lignum vitae. And um, that, that, that yellow looking thing you see there is a sea whip. Remember, things are mainly named down here by the way they looked and shaped. So, altogether, there are three separate uh, black coral plant in this area, very dear to me as we move on because we can't stay in one area too long. We need to find the stingray. So, we are still looking for the stingray. This is another area that I love so much. Whenever I come to dive in this area, I always visit this piece of sponge. It is, for me, one of the most beautiful, um, you know, formation of the species of the sponge with that red on the side, the green, and then, you know, in inside of it, more looking like what a potter does with a clay before he, you know, really make it into what he or she wants to make it in. And, um, you know, I always visit this area just to look at this piece of sponge to see that, see to it that it's not broken. There are some, you know, um, decay taking place inside of it, but it always recovers from something like that. It is just due to age. And, um, it, and, you know, it provides shelters at night. Sometimes when you go do a night diving, you'll find like the king crab inside that area. This is another piece of sponge. It is it's very soft just like the foam sponge that you sleep on this piece of sponge is like that um it's very very soft in nature and spongy so when i learn about the sponge coral this is the first piece that i have ever came across so we're going across the sand close to the coral head and we are looking at a seashell at a conch or con con yeah conch shell that one is dead though somehow yeah, uh, maybe a crab is inside there, so it's on top of the reef. So we are still looking in the sand, still looking for that disc-shaped animal, still trying to find it. I hope we will discover one today. Keep your fingers crossed. And if you see one and you can identify it, no problem, point it out. Oh, well, that's a sponge. See how soft it is? Yeah, it's the same one that I've shown to you and was having a discussion on it earlier on. But we have to find the stingray because the stingray is the main reason we are scuba diving today and i'm just showing you how to find them we're looking in the sand well yeah i heard yeah 
I my daughter advised me that I need to break from behind the camera, my nine-year-old daughter. So I guess she will be pleased with this one because for the first time, I came from behind the camera and showed my face briefly. I don't know if anybody sees the stingray, but we are right over the stingray. If you notice in the sand, there it is right beside that piece of coral. If you look where the sand look a little bit agitated, you see that disc-shaped animal. You can see what resembles two bulges and the frontal section of, of it, those are its eyes. The mouth are underneath its belly and you see that little piece of stick that is, you know, look like it's placed there on the bottom. That's not a piece of stick. That's a stingray tail. So I'll just um, nudge it a little forward. Uh, this is something you shouldn't do because it have a very pointed bone and the root of the tail that it used to defend itself and if you if it feel threatened it may just lash out at you so i know how to agitate it without even touching it because it have good hearing senses and you know it picks up vibration in the water so once i move towards it that's it there you go we have found him a stingray now as you watch the video for more content like this one, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell, and when you do, click all. So when we upload, you will always get, you know, uh, one of our get our videos when we upload them. So there you go, uh, Southern Stingray. This one is medium-sized one. The males are smaller than the female. Uh, so if this one is a female, she can get up to three times the size, but the male generally don't grow bigger than this one. It's very difficult for me to tell from the distance that I'm at if it's a male or a female. Normally I could, but because it didn't allow me to come too close to it. So I hope you enjoy your video and thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and you share this video. Tell somebody about it. Tell a friend to tell a friend and invite them to come over here. And while we go... Remember Philippians 4 verse 8. Keep it in mind. Thank you, my loyal viewers. We'll talk again.